Excellency. I'll have to verify your appointment before I can pass you through. You'll have to pull over. Hi, Mac. Morning, Mary. Did you save me a parking space? Right at the head of the line. Thanks. Officer. Just a moment. Where do you think you're going? To work. Here's my pass. Employees use the West Executive Avenue entrance. Oh, but I always come in this way. Yes, but beginning today, you're an employee, and employees use the employee's entrance. You know, officer, I have a lot of influence. My father's quite a big shot around here. Young lady, rules are rules, and, and no, no exceptions. exceptions. Morning, Mary. Oh, good morning, Harky. Having trouble, Tim? A little. I wish you'd give the new girls in your department a rundown on the rules around here. With you for a father, I'm sure this one knows them backwards. Dad, you're in a rut. What you need is a change of climate. Now, why don't you try a few weeks at the South Entrance? Young lady, <laughs> I... Dear. See you for dinner, Dad. Mary, my new girls usually get an indoctrination speech almost as long as a congressional record. Must we, Harky? Glory be, no. After a couple of years at the Supreme Court, I'm sure you know the duties and responsibilities of the job. There's one thing I must stress, though. That's the need for absolute secrecy. Anything you might overhear is a solemn trust. I understand. I'll wait yeah. for you immediately, sir. I'm sorry, sir. He hasn't returned. Well, here she is, girls, the ex-voice of the Supreme Court. Hi. Welcome to the family. Hello, Mary. Pull up the switchboard and sit down. Thanks, Mary. Yes, please. I don't think I have much trouble, Harky. The boards are the same general type I've been using. Except that here, more is expected of you than merely handling the switchboards. Besides memorizing hundreds of numbers, you've got to be a combination diplomat and detective, ready to decide instantly which calls are legitimate and which are from cranks. Senator Downs is in Istanbul. Shall I try to get him for you, sir? You have to locate people in all parts of the world. Some who haven't been heard from in years and often under almost impossible conditions. White House. One moment, sir. Please give that it's him again. Yes, Old are. Faithful. Sorry, on the dot. What will I tell him this time? I've run out of polite phrases for go jump in the lake. Tell him... What? No. Mary, you might as well start now as later. There's a Mr. Paxton on the line. He's been pestering us for days trying to get through to the president. We've instructions to kill his call at the board, but he takes a lot of killing. Well, I... I know. Go ahead now. Let's see what sort of a diplomat you are. It's all yours. White House. Thank you. House. May I help I'm you, please? Sorry, but we have no record of any such person. White House. Well, isn't there someone besides the president who can take care of it? Thank you. Uh, may I inquire the nature of your business? Fish. Yes, oh, but uh, I'm sure that they have a fish market where they trade, Mr. Paxton. My dear lady, I don't sell fish. I study them. I'm an ichthyologist. Oh, an ichthyologist. Uh, may I suggest that you communicate with the Fish and Wildlife section of the Department of the Interior? Sorry, Johannesburg does not answer. Now, why would a man get so upset about fish? Maybe they're spoiling. White House. White House. Yes, please. No, Mr. Paxton, I did not cut you off. Look, miss. Every year, like a clock, I pay my taxes. I'm a citizen in good standing. And the president is supposed to be a servant of the people. Oh, I know that the president is the servant of the people. And if he's a servant of the people, he's supposed to be available when the people need him. Well, I'm one of the people. Now, will you please put my call through? Well, um, why don't you try writing to your congressman? Oh. White House. Well, there must be someone who can help you without bothering the president. Yes, please. Well, the governor is not he says he has more nickels than a slot machine, and he's going to get through to the president if he goes broke trying. I think he should be reported to the Secret Service. There's no law against phoning the president. I'll get rid of that guppy grower once and for all. Mary, no, not that one. Why not? Listen. Good morning, Mr. President. Ready on your call, sir. Yes, Mr. President. London will call back at 10.15. You're welcome, Mr. President. This is the president's private extension. Of course, he may call on any one of the other 185, but when that little light goes on, it's always the president. I see. Call for you, Mary, on trunk five. Yes, Justice Hastings of the Sorry, Supreme Court. Uh-oh. Here comes a dissenting opinion. White House. You may reach him through Hello, the Justice seat. Hastings. Yes, Mary, what's my daughter's phone number in Texas? What time do I take my pills, and what the devil are you doing over there? Hackerville 318, ring two. The white pill's at 11, the brown pill's at 4, and I'm working on the switchboard. That's what I heard, and it doesn't make much sense. You walked out on the switchboard to marry Philip. 
Now, I learn you've walked out on marrying Philip to go back to a switchboard. That's idiotic even for young people. He's oh, well, well, uh, can't we talk about it later? I could meet you at Gustav's. Dad and I are having dinner there. Goodbye, Justice Hastings. I'm sorry, but we have no... Oh, wasn't that sweet of him? He just wanted to call and wish me luck. Mary, you did give them notice when you left the Supreme Court. I wouldn't want them to think I lured you away. Oh, it's nothing like that. Mary, for you, Justice Peabody on five. White House. Yes, White please. House. One moment, please. Yes, I'll take care of it right away. Hello, Justice Peabody. Mary, your decision not to marry Philip is your own business, and I'd be the last one to interfere. Thank you, Justice Peabody. It was very nice of you to call to tell me so. But clarification of a misunderstanding is not interference. And I happen to know that Philip's explanation of what happened the other evening is the absolute truth. It's no use, Your Honor. I've been through all that. Now, just let me handle this, Philip. That Wentworth girl is a witness in an important government case. And Philip was out with her strictly in his capacity as an attorney for the Justice Department. Justice Peabody, the fact that Philip was out with Miss Wentworth is immaterial, irrelevant, and has no bearing on the case. The I'm still not getting married. Get the new number for you, sir. I know, but... Yes, but... Please give Mr. Justice, can't we discuss it some other time? Yes, please. Tonight at Gustav's. Goodbye. I'm Mary? Sorry, we have no record of any such I'm afraid there's one point I overlooked. White House operators are always on call. Therefore, as a matter of practice, we never hire young married women. So if there's any possibility of your getting married in the near future... Oh, but there isn't. I'm sure everyone's convinced of that by now. Well, it didn't sound that way. Believe me, Harky. That's the last we'll hear of it. Mary, for you, Justice Van Sloan. Sorry to interrupt, Senator, but your wife is on the line. Rules are rules. And we're not supposed to receive any personal calls. That's all I received all day. It's a wonder my first day at the White House wasn't my last. <laughs> Oh, fine. Now we're back to the hiccups again. I thought you were all calmed down. I'm perfectly calm. And when we get inside, I'll be even calmer. Sure you will. Oh, hold it, Dad. Mm -hmm. See if Philip's in there, will you? He's there. Now what? Let's just wait a few seconds to be sure there are no more stray hiccups. Philip knows I only get them when I'm emotionally upset, and I don't want him to think I'm upset on account of him. Stop worrying, Gustav. The examination is quite simple. Thousands of people have passed it. And you've still got four days. I know, Your Honorship, but just to answer the questions, that's not enough for me. I, I would like to know everything about becoming a citizen. <laughs> that's my ambition. Uh, where are we? Uh, Section 7, Article 2. Oh. When the bill shall have passed the Senate and the House of Representatives, it shall, before it becomes a law, be presented to... The President of the United States, Justice Peabody. <laughs> and if he approves it, he shall... Uh... Sign it, Justice Williams. But if not, he shall... Return it, Justice Hastings. With what? With his objections, Justice Van Sloan. Where to? <laughs> to the house where it originated, Justice Mullings. I mean, Justice Philip. I mean, Philip. <laughs> <laughs> A perfect score, Gustav. Would you like to try for double? No. Oh, no. Oh, oh, please don't get up. Well, how's my favorite future citizen this evening? <laughs> and my favorite four nights of the Supreme Court. Splendid, well, Mary. Don't I rate a hello? Well, of course, Philip, how are you? Mary, after you had your dinner, we'd like to have that little talk with you. Oh, Mr. Justice, I know what you want to say, and I know it's because you want to help me. You've always helped me. All of you. But this time I have to make my own decision, and I'm not going to marry Philip. But Mary, Mary let's see. Mm, something okay. smells good. What is it, Gustav? Hasenpfeffer Gustav, my specialty. I think I'll go and see if it looks as good as it smells. Well, Philip, you might as well tear up the license. Oh, no. I'm going in there and get this straightened out right now. Wait, Philip. First, you must be in the right mood. Let me handle it. I know Mary. Well, looks like Mary, Gustav, and I will make a very happy couple. Igor, give me some music, something romantic. How about the charter? Oh, that's happy romantic, something sad romantic. I want the violin to cry and... What's that? Gone to Bratton mit Spetzel. Extra good today, Miss Mary. I put a lot of love into it. That's for Dad and me. <laughs> you are not going to have the Hasen Pfeffer a la Gustav? I made it especially for the judges and you. Oh, well, I was just... It better stick to my Gans Bratton, Miss Mary. He put too much pfeffer in the Hasen Pfeffer. Too much pfeffer. Just enough pfeffer. Too much. I said just enough. Now listen, Bertha. Who is Viennese here? You or I? Gustav, we'll have a little of each, huh? 
Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's for Justice Peabody's birthday party tomorrow night. But never mind the party. Mary, I can't stand to see you so unhappy. What are you talking about? I've never been happier in my life. A lover's quarrel. Ah, such a sad thing, especially when the lovers are in love. But there wasn't any lover's quarrel. From Gustav, you can't hide it. Usually my Mary's so happy, so gay. Believe me, I... So that's the reason for the weeping fiddles. Gustav, if it'll convince anyone how happy I am, I'll dance, sing, or even stand on my head. All right, now, Igor, we've all had a good cry. Play something cheerful. Firm, my boy. Hassenpfeffer a la Gustav, Gansbraten a la Bertha. And we'd better like both of them. Mind if I join you? Of course not. Oh, excuse me. I, I just remembered something I've got to tell Gustav. <laughs> the subtle touch. In case you don't get it, he wants us to be alone. Mary, I'm sorry about all those phone calls. Let's forget it, Philip. There is too much pepper. I merely mentioned the situation to the justices this morning. I didn't want them to call you, but... Well, your attitude is so ridiculous. It's not ridiculous. Jealousy is always ridiculous. For three days, I've been trying to tell you the reason we're not getting married is because I wasn't jealous. That's even more ridiculous. No, it isn't. <sighs> Look, Philip, when people have known each other for a long time and have had a lot of dates together, they're apt to become a habit with each other. I didn't realize that's what had happened to us until I saw you with Miss Wentworth and discovered I wasn't the least bit annoyed. What's that supposed to prove? Just this. A woman shouldn't marry a man if she isn't at least a little bit upset when he breaks a date with her and goes out with another woman, a beautiful woman. And at the time, I didn't even know it was a business date. Mary, that's a defense mechanism, an unconscious manifestation of your jealousy. Please, Philip, I've had a rough day. The justices, Gustav, you, Paxton. Paxton? I didn't talk to anyone named Paxton. Well, I did. Twenty-three times. He insisted upon speaking to the president. All day long, it was, yes, Mr. Paxton, no, Mr. Paxton, I'm sorry, Mr. Paxton, no, you may not speak to him, Mr. Paxton. I was dying to say you're a pain in the neck, Mr. Paxton. If it were up to me, I... Young lady, do you know the meaning of the word bumbledom? Bumbledom, young lady, is the pomposity of petty officials, little people and little jobs who think the world will stop turning without them. I, I beg your pardon? You are your switchboard, thinking that you have the right to decide who may or may not speak to the president. The fish peddler. For the tenth time, miss, I am not a fish peddler. And for the tenth time, Mr. Paxton, the president of the United States is not interested in fish. Paxton, how do you do? The president's interested in his navy, isn't he? Well, what's the navy got to do with it? Now, look Quiet, here. Quiet, please. It's his navy that won't let me get near Kokopanga Atoll to study my fish. Is what you just said intelligible to you, Mr. Paxton? Of course it is. Well, then there's someone who can help you a lot more than the president. Who? A psychiatrist. Oh. Uh, miss, as an ardent admirer of the female sex, 
May I say without a doubt that you are the most insufferable specimen it has ever been my misfortune to encounter? You've said just about that's enough. That's all I intend to say. Except for one more thing, Miss Number, please. I'll get through to the president in spite of you and your bumbledom. Mary, who was that? That's a man who's going to spend the rest of his life in a telephone booth. Oh. Hi, Mac. Morning, Mary. How's the parking situation? Pretty good. You won't have any trouble this early. Oh. If you're selling mackerel, I don't want any. I've been waiting around to tell you how sorry I am about last night. All right, you're sorry. Now, if you'll pardon me... My I... behavior was inexcusable. I couldn't sleep all night thinking about it. Perhaps you better go home now and try to get some sleep. <sighs> this is to tell you how sorry I am, and uh, this is to ask you to forgive me. Oh, Mr. Paxton, you didn't have to do this. Oh, I insist. I'll feel much better if you accept these slight tokens of my genuine repentance. <sighs> well, all right, and thank you. Uh, forgiven? Forgiven? <laughs> oh, I feel much better already. Now, miss, uh, if you could... <laughs> Friends? Friends? Then couldn't you just once put my call through to the president? Mr. Paxton, I have never been an admirer of the male sex. But may I say, without a doubt, you are the most underhanded, presumptuous specimen it has ever been my misfortune to encounter. <laughs> Hilda. I know that isn't a hangover. No, I'm just a little upset about something. I'll be all right. Do you think you could handle the board for a few minutes? Oh, I think so. <gasps> there won't be any action. It's much too early. I'll be right back. <gasps> White House. Well, I'm sorry, madam, but the egg rolling is only on Easter Sunday. You're welcome. Good morning, Mr. President. <gasps> oh, oh, I'm terribly sorry, sir. <gasps> they started about ten minutes ago. Thank you, Mr. President. I'll try that. Right now? All right, sir. <coughs> Good night, Mr. President. Now, don't you worry about me. I'll be all right. <coughs> Good night again, Mr. President. Dr. Andrews? Yes, right away, sir. Will you please tell Dr. Andrews the president wants to see him immediately? Dr. Andrews? Is the president sick? Oh, it's nothing serious, just a cold. <gasps> Did you ever try standing on your head? Only in slacks. Hilda, did you just take the president's call to Dr. Andrews? Uh, no, sir. It was our new girl, Miss Peppertree. <gasps> oh. Tim's daughter? Yes, sir. Fine. I'm Harvey Elwood, secretary to the president. Yes, I know, Mr. Elwood. <coughs> I've seen you many times. With the president's compliments. It's for your hiccups. You just breathe into the bag a couple of times. The president says when everything else fails, this is absolutely surefire. Oh, thank you, Mr. Elwood. <coughs> Please thank the president. Tell him I think it's awfully sweet of him. Sweet? You may get that oh, yes, please. of course. And I'll give him your exact words. Awfully sweet. <coughs> Morning, Hilda. Mary, what in the world are you doing? Oh, it's a hiccup cure. Yes, please. It worked. For you, Mary. It's the president. Yes, Mr. President? Oh, they're all gone now. Thank you. How's your cold? Oh, that's a shame. If I were you, I'd take some Irish moss and aspirin. That's right, Mr. President. My grandmother always made us take it, and it worked like a charm. Don't mention it, Mr. President. Senator Ellis? Yes, right away. White House. Gee, the President's nice. Irish moss. Mary, I've been working that board for 15 years, and I never got that chummy with a vice president. Mm -hmm. You can stay on the board. Your probation's over. Oh, thanks, Harvey. That's wonderful. White House. 
Philip, you promised not to call me here. I know, Mary, but I have to find out what time to pick you up for Justice Peabody's party. I don't want you to call for me. White House. I'm I know sorry, you take me every year, but if I go with you tonight, we'll be right back where we started from. Hold the line a minute, Philip. Yes, please. White House. Right away, sir. I beg your pardon, sir. This is Monsieur La Havre of the French Embassy. You will permit me, please, to speak with the President. No? Yes, sir. No, Mr. Paxton, I will not. Your call to Alaska. We're ready. Go ahead, please. Philip? Oh, I thought I disconnected you. Yes, now, look, Philip, if we show up together tonight, everybody's going to start playing the wedding march again. I... Hold it, Philip. White House. General who of what army? Mr. Paxton, I said no. Philip? Now, you know I want to go to Justice Peabody's party. I've been to everyone since I was a baby. But under the circumstances, I can't go with you, and I'd rather not go alone, so I'm afraid I'll just have to stay home. I haven't time to argue with you now. Goodbye. Mary, have you been talking to the president again? No, why? Well, you're still cut in on his line. Listen, young fella, if you as much as make one move towards the president's car, you'll be up to your ears in secret service men. Look, I only want to talk to him. Ever try using a telephone? Uh, that's all I've been doing for days. <laughs> Miss, will you please tell this man how many times I've tried to call the president? Oh, well, I... You know this man, Miss Peppertree? Well, I guess so, in a way. I mean, I've met him, but well, I don't... Well, if he's a friend of yours, you better get him out of here. Come on, I'll take I, it I easy. Know. I don't want to get I him out of here. I don't want to take it easy. I'll get him away before he winds up in trouble. You can get out here, Mr. Paxton. You think I'm a little cracked, don't you? If I could talk to you for just five minutes, I'd convince you I have a legitimate reason for seeing the president. Look, Mr. Paxton, what I think of you or your complaint is of absolutely no importance. If you're on that White House switchboard, you must know your way around. Maybe you can tell me how I go about getting to the president. I... Maybe I can. How would you like to talk to the president's secretary? <laughs> no soap. I've already talked to three. Oh, but this is Mr. Elwood, his executive administrative assistant. Why, he can arrange for you to speak to the president like that. Oh, that's great. How soon can you arrange for him to do like that? Like that? But first you have to do me a favor. <laughs> I might have known. What kind of a favor? Oh, it's nothing much. All you have to do is take me to a party tonight. What kind of a party? It's a very nice party. You don't have to act as if you're getting a tooth pulled. Well... Well, don't rush me. I've got to figure out all the angles. There are no angles. Okay. What time do I pick you up and where? 8.30. 3.27 Walnut. Now, where do you live? I'll drop you off. Hotel Puritan, but don't bother. I'll walk. According to our agreement, our date doesn't begin until 8.30. Come in, Dad. There's a young man downstairs. He says he's taking you to the party. That's good. I'm all ready. But it's not Philip. Since when is Philip the only living member of the male sex? Good night, Dad. Don't wait up for me. Miss Peppertree? Yes? I'm Lieutenant Thomas Farrington. I'm escorting you to Justice Peabody's party. Oh, but there must be some mistake. No, Miss Peppertree. I'm a naval aide at the White House, and I'm here at the President's request. I don't understand. Oh, yes, I do. Oh, well, I'm afraid there's been a misunderstanding, Lieutenant. You see, I got on the President's phone by mistake, and he thinks I'm staying home alone tonight, but I've already made other arrangements. Well, Miss Peppertree, in my position, a presidential request is an order, and I've been ordered to take you to the party. Am I to inform the President that you refuse? Oh, no, no, that would be terrible. I mean, I'm not refusing it. Well, to tell you the truth, Lieutenant, I was going to the party tonight to prove something. This just spoils everything. Well, as long as I'm on orders, Miss, you just order, and I'll help you prove anything you want. Oh, Dad, I'd like to have you meet Lieutenant Farrington. I thought you looked familiar, Lieutenant. Farrington, Thomas J., pass number H-3. 
34792 assigned to the White House three weeks ago. Dad, and... there'll be a Mr. Paxton calling for me. Just tell him I'm awfully sorry, but that I had to leave for the party without him. Good night, sir. Good night. Age 30, born in Virginia. Height, 5 feet 11. <laughs> Not bad, Timothy. Not bad. Next question. In how many ways do bills become laws? In three ways, salami, bologna, chopped liver, by a majority vote of both houses and the signature of the president, turkey mustard, by a two-third majority vote over the president's veto, chicken marinated herring, by the president keeping the bill for 10 days and liver washed. Good. Now, who is Gustav? Gustav, that's me. Good evening. <laughs> Who's that with Mary? I don't know. I know every one of her friends, but this friend is a stranger. Many happy returns, Mr. Justice. Thank you, Good Mary. evening, Mrs. Peabody. Uh, Justice Peabody, Mrs. Peabody, may I present Lieutenant Farrington? How do you do? How do you do, Mr. Justice? I'm sure you'll excuse us, but there are so many people I want Tom to meet. Certainly. Well, I never saw him before. Justice Hastings, Justice Van Sloan. May I present a very dear friend, Lieutenant Farrington? How do you do, Mr. Justice? How do you do? Mr. Justice, Lieutenant Farrington. Isn't it a simply wonderful party? Delightful, it is. <laughs> I've got a hunch there's going to be an emergency session of the Supreme Court at any minute. How am I doing, Miss Pepitree? Fine, but you better start calling me Mary. Okay, Mary. Say, uh, which one is Philip? Over there in front of the buffet table. Mmm, a little on the heavy side, isn't he? Don't be funny, that's Gustav. <laughs> oh, never mind, Mary. What's the next question? Never mind the next question. On your toes, Tom. Here comes the fact-finding committee. Hello, Philip. I'm glad you changed your mind about coming, Mary. So am I. It's a very nice party. Yes, it is. Everyone seems to be having so much fun. Yes, they do. Uh, it's even nicer than last year. Yes, it is. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. You haven't met Tom, have you? Lieutenant Farrington, this is Mr. Manning. How are you, doing, Lieutenant? Nice party, isn't it? Yes, it is. Everyone seems to be having so much fun. <laughs> yes, they do. It's even nicer than last year. Yes, it is. Warm, isn't it? Oh, may I get you a cold drink? Oh, I... Would you get me one, too, Manning? My uh, trick knee is bothering me. What is this about a trick knee? Oh, just a little something I whipped up in the spare moment. How about changing to a more comfortable seat? Thank you. Excellent maneuvering, Lieutenant. One of the first things I learned in the Navy, elementary navigation. Here we are, Mary. Very considerate of you, Manning. Very clever of you, Lieutenant. Nice fellow, that man. Nice fellow, that Lieutenant. A real smarty. Not so smart. Mr. Justice. Yes? Isn't it about time our music depreciation group got rolling? Son, we were just beginning to get a mite worried that nobody would ask us. I hope you brought your guitar, Colonel. You know I did, sir. That guitar's been my campaign weapon for years. I'd feel mighty naked without it. And by an odd coincidence, I had my accordion tuned this afternoon. Mrs. Peabody? Yes, sir. Mary, this is the nicest chore I've had since I've been in the Navy. First thing tomorrow, I'm going to thank the president personally. Will you tell him for me? Justice Williams. Justice Van Sloan. Better get an invitation to sing in 10 seconds. Oh, Mary. Two seconds flat. Lieutenant, I'm on. Sorry to drag you away from the Navy, but I reckon we need a soprano more than he does. And are you sure you did the reckoning, Colonel? Now, Lydia, no hot licks. This accordion isn't as young as it used to be. <laughs> <laughs> what would it be? The same thing we always start with? Sure. Oh, yes. All right. One, two.
wait a minute, Mary. Let's do uh, Kathleen. Oh, yes. I'll take you home again, Kathleen, across the ocean wild and wide, to where your heart has ever been, since first you Great. And Manning, you've got an excellent voice. Oh, thank you, Lieutenant. Say, how about, uh, let me call you sweetheart. Oh, yeah, yeah. And Mr. Manning can take the lead. No, I'd rather not. Oh, sure. After Why all, not? this is a quartet. Oh, I could... come on, son. We're just getting started. Ready? Let me call you sweetheart. I'm in love with you. There's a lot more I'd like to find out about you. Let's get back to our love seat. Mr. Litchfield. Good evening, Thomas. I didn't know you were going to be here, sir. That's quite obvious. Oh, uh, Miss Peppertree, may I present Mr. Samuel Litchfield? It's a great pleasure, sir. I read your newspaper every morning. I'm delighted to hear it. Doris is quite disturbed that you couldn't keep your date this evening. An errand for the president, I understand. Well, that's quite true, Mr. Litchfield. You see, I... Mary, will you excuse us for a moment? I had every intention of keeping the date, sir. Everyone here is talking about you and that, that sailor. Are they really, Philip? You know they are. Who is he anyway? Oh, well, he's at the White House. And you know how we are at the White House. Just one big happy family. Well, I don't like him. Then I'll tell you what you do, Philip. Don't go out with him. Hey, Mary, would you mind terribly if we left? But it's so early, Tom. I know, but it's very important. Oh, well, in that case, I'm sure the Peabody's will forgive it. And I'm sure Mr. Manning will, too. Wasn't this a stroke of genius, Mary? I wonder if Mr. Litchfield would think so. Ah, moonlight and cherry blossoms. Tom, who's Doris? Doris? Oh, an old coal miner I met in a mine shaft. There we were. Blonde or brunette? It varies. Tom, did you have a date with her this evening? Ah, uh, moonlight and cherry blossoms. You did have a date with her. Oh, now, Mary, you know how it is in a town like this. You go out with a girl a few times, everybody starts building it into a big romance. Is that how it is with you and Doris? That's how it is. Only I didn't catch on until Mr. Five Star Final asked me how I'd like to quit the Navy and go into the newspaper business. And the lieutenant no like, huh? No like. I'm allergic to permanent shore duty. I want to get back to sea. I don't care whether it's on a battle wagon or a war canoe. Then how did you happen to wind up at the White House? Mr. Litchfield, he wanted to make sure I'd be around. The worst part of it is it's a full year's assignment, and I've still got 11 months to go. 
Oh, that is a long time. Depends on whose company I spend it in. Must be getting close to 19 bells, Admiral. Or whatever you call it in the Navy when it's time for a working girl to be going home. It's been a wonderful evening, Tom. Thanks for everything. What are you grinning about? I was thinking how I tried to get out of this assignment and how swell it turned out to be. <laughs> Tom, do me a favor, will you? Name it. Kiss me goodnight. Okay, I'm still on orders. Kissing her right under our noses. I've got to find out more about that young man. Wait till I get my shoes. I thank you. And I thank you. I thank the president. And I thank you. Very smart, Mary. That ought to prove to them that Philip's a dead duck. Thanks again, Tom. Good night. Good night. Mary, you proved something to me, too. I'll be around tomorrow to pick up where we left off, strictly on a personal basis. Hi. What are you doing here? I thought you two would never break it up. Well, I hope you got an earful, you, you peeping Tom. Oh, look, Miss Peppertree, I didn't come here for the floor show. We had a date tonight, remember? Oh. Well, I'm sorry about that, but it couldn't be helped. I know, the Navy came along. Oh, that's not so, Mr. Paxton. You see, originally, I was supposed to go out with somebody else. That's right, me. No, not you, somebody else. Well, good going. You stood up somebody else to make a date with me, then stood me up to go out with a sailor. A double-double cross. If you'll stop jumping at conclusions, I'll try to tell you what happened. Don't bother. The date doesn't interest me at all. I merely waited to show you that I was living up to my part of the bargain. And I'm willing to live up to mine. We can get together sometime tomorrow. Skip it. Judging from past performances, I don't think you're the dependable type. Between now and tomorrow, you're liable to run into a Marine. I insist that you let me tell you what happened. It's perfectly obvious. You just figured that you could do better. And uh, while we're on the subject, you could have done just as well with me. It's a different one. Good night, Miss Peppertree. The general is in Alaska, but I can put you through to his aide. Your appointment has been changed at 3 o'clock, sir. A call for you, Mary. The president on one. Oh. Good morning, Mr. President. White House. Oh, yes, I had a lovely time, thank you. Sorry, but you'll have to arrange... Oh, he was very nice and considerate. White House. It was most thoughtful of you, Mr. President. Thank you very much. I'll give him your message. Listen, girls, if Mr. Paxton calls, let me take it, will you? I was wondering what was missing. Eleven o'clock and Brother Paxton hasn't called. Eleven o'clock. Time for coffee relief. Right away, sir. Oh, if Mr. Paxton calls while I'm out, ask him to call back. Ask him to call back. Is she kidding? Oh, Miss Peppertree, I was just on my way over to see you. The president has an idea something went wrong last night. You didn't sound very convincing over the phone. Well, to tell you the truth, Mr. Elwood, I had another date and I had to stand him up. Oh, that is serious. Yes, it wasn't a very nice thing to do, and he thinks I'm a pretty awful person. He does, eh? Well, Mary, if the president got you into the situation, it's up to him to get you out. That's what presidents are for. Oh, no, Mr. Elwood, I wouldn't think of bothering the president. But if you have a spare moment, his name is David Paxton, and he lives at the Puritan Hotel. Well, that's probably for you, miss. Nobody in this town would be calling me. Hello? Yes, sir. It is for you, sir. It's the president. I don't know any president. The president? Oh, no. No, 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 just a minute. Hello? Mr. President? Yes, this is David Paxton. Who? Oh, her. Why, I didn't give it a thought, Mr. President. Oh, believe me, sir, it's very unimportant. What I want to discuss is my fish. 
No, F-I-S-H. Yes, that's right, Mr. President, Fish. Now, well, yes, she's probably a very nice girl, but I... I well, yes, I, I'm sure she is, Mr. President, but... But what about my fish? I can't get near them on account of the Navy. Mr. President, don't hang up. Mr. President! He hung up. Oh, Mary. I didn't want to discuss this in front of the other girls. That's why I asked you to come here. Yes, Mr. Elwood. I don't know the exact situation between you and Mr. Paxton, but if you're entertaining any serious thoughts about him, I'm afraid he doesn't return them. Oh, but I'm not, Mr. Elwood. Well, I hardly know him. The president will be glad to hear it. Frankly, he wasn't very impressed with Mr. Paxton. The young man doesn't seem to be entirely uh, rational. Oh, no, he didn't talk to the president about fish. Every time your name was mentioned. Oh, please thank the president for me, Mr. Elwood, and tell him I don't ever expect to see Mr. Paxton again. I'm sure the president will be pleased. You see, Mary, just between you and me, it's the president's unofficial opinion that Mr. Paxton is more or less of a square. <laughs> Keep the country running until I get back. I'll try, Murray. Hi. Thanks for the assist with the president, Miss Peppertree. It was a good try, even though I didn't get any place. Did you ever try talking about anything besides fish? Oh, well, that's why I came to Washington. You see, years ago, my father decided... I don't decided want to rude, Mr. Paxton, and I'm sure it's a fascinating story, but I only get one hour for lunch. If I skim over the details of my early childhood, I can just make it. No, thank you. Oh, please, let me take you to lunch. I promise I won't tell you the story of my life. You promise not to mention fish? Fish? Never heard of them. <laughs> Which way are we headed? Well, I have a very special place for nice spring days. No minimum, no cover. Ham and one other kind. What other kind? <laughs> it's unmentionable. Sardines. <laughs> <laughs> now, you brought the subject up. Don't blame me. Well, as long as we have opened the can of sardines, what is all this about fish in the Navy? Well, to begin at the beginning, have you ever heard of Paxton's Encyclopedia of Marine Life in the Pacific? You? <laughs> My father. He was considered just about the world's foremost ichthyologist. About 40 years ago, he came across Cocopango Atoll. Had a crystal clear lagoon teeming with fish. Perfect spot for marine laboratory. So he bought it. The lagoon? No, oh, no, the whole island. Oh, it's just a tiny place with a handful of natives. Anyway, when he died, I took over. I was doing a passable job, too, when the war broke out. When I got back four years later, I found the Navy had moved in. They wouldn't even let me near the place. Didn't you tell them it was your island? Oh, I got writers cramped sending letters to every department in Washington. But every department in Washington kept referring me to every other department in Washington. So I finally decided to come here and take it up with a head man personally. Now, is there anything unreasonable in that? Not at all. Why didn't you get a lawyer? Oh, I did. In Honolulu. He wrote as many letters as I did, but he didn't do any good either. I know just the man who can tell you what to do. Philip Manning, the fellow I was with at the restaurant a couple of nights oh, ago. Oh, him? He's one of the smartest assistants in the attorney general's office. I'll make an appointment with him for tonight. You pick me up at home at 8 o'clock. Well, that's swell. I guess I'd better be getting back to work. You know, Miss Pepper Tree, if I ever get back to my work in Coco Pango, I'm going to name a fish after you. <laughs> <laughs> Come in, Dad. Your date's here. Good, I'm all ready. But it isn't. I know, it isn't Philip again. Now, don't you read too late. You're on early duty tomorrow. Good night. <laughs> Tom, what is this? We're going to the movies. Oh, no, we're not. Oh, yes, we are. It's a special movie. It's at the White House. The president suggested that I ask you. But you knew I had a date tonight. I told you on the phone. Yes, but you didn't tell the president. You could have told him. Oh, no, I'm no stupid. And besides, the president doesn't like Paxton. What do you know about Paxton? Not much, except that I heard the president and Mr. Elwood discussing him. Frankly, Mary, from what they think of him, you'd be in much better company with me. I'm not so sure. Mary, 
Who do you think's a better judge of character, you or the president? Oh, all right. Now, you wait here. I have to leave a message for Mr. Paxton. Dad! Dad! Here we are. The president is tied up. He suggests that we go ahead without him. Good evening, Manny. Remember me? Yes. Hello, Paxton. Oh, sit down. Thanks. Miss Pepitree left word for me to meet you here. Where is Mary? She'll join us later. Now, here's the situation that Why I want... later? Another day, didn't it? I have here a treaty between my father and the native king of Kokopanga Atoll. With but... whom? The native king of Kokopanga Atoll. No, I mean her date. Oh, same fellows last night. Now, you'll notice that in this treaty... Barrington? Yeah. It's not like Mary to make an appointment and not keep it. Well, it's not her fault, Manning. Orders from the president. On the strength of this treaty, my father went What's ahead... What's the of... president got to do with it? Don't ask me. I only know what her father told me. She went out with Farrington because the president wanted her to. Now, you'll notice that in the terms of this treaty... So that's purchase... just... <coughs> now, wait a minute, Manning. Congress can tax exports, suspend the right of habeas corpus except in wartime, or pass an ex post facto law or a bill of attainder. <laughs> now you ask me a hard one. <laughs> Gentlemen, I've just found out what's going on between Mary and that naval officer. She was ordered to go out with him by the president. Oh, nonsense, Philip. It's true, sir. She's out with him again right now. Not because she wants to, but on account of the president. Oh, I'm sure there's a logical explanation, Philip. I'm having dinner at the White House on Sunday, and I'll mention it to the president. Sunday? Anything can happen between now and Sunday. I'm seeing the president on Thursday. What can happen before Sunday can happen before Thursday. Well, Philip, it'll make you any happier. I'll phone Elwood right now and find out what's going on. Well, thank you, sir. Section room. One moment, please. Elwood speaking. Good evening, Justice Speaker. Honey. Oh, yes. Really, I had no idea. I'm sure the President didn't either. I'm afraid I can't discuss it over the phone, Mr. Justice. Where are you? I'll come right over. More coffee, sir? No, thanks. Seven cups are enough. I have read all the books about the rights of the president. Bills he can sign, bills he can veto. The first baseball he can throw out every season. But not in one book it says that he can break up Philip and Mary. Uh, I don't like to intrude, Manning, but uh, will you be much longer? Oh, I'm sorry. We've been waiting for someone, but we can get your business straightened out in the meantime. Good. Now, as I said before about this treaty, I'm sure you'll find it clearly establishes my legal title to Cocopango Atoll. The marine laboratory that my father... Sorry, Paxton, there's our man. I'm telling you, this fellow with Philip, I've seen someplace. But, Gustav, you must see hundreds of people in here. Yes, but this was someplace not here. Oh, here's Elwood. Oh, hello, Harvey. Mr. Justice. Sit down. Nice of you to come and solve this riddle for us. Well, what is this interest of the President and Miss Peppertree? Yeah. Well, I'm sure the President didn't think it was going to become a matter for the Supreme Court. He merely became acquainted with her over the telephone and wanted to help her. Neither of us had any idea that Mr. Manning was concerned. We thought we were protecting her from a very disagreeable young man named Paxton. David Paxton? Oh, yes. Do you know him? He's sitting right over there. Excuse me. Mr. Paxton, I want to speak to you. Well, it's about time. Now, if you'll just look at this treaty. I'm not interested in your treaty. I'm concerned with Mary Peppertree. Oh, for heaven's sakes, Manny. Can't you talk about anybody but Mary Peppertree? I want to know what's been going on with you and Mary. <sighs> look, Manny, I've been accused of having a one-track mind fish. But everybody I run across in Washington is in much worse shape than I am. You people are all suffering from a Mary Pepper tree fixation. I'm getting out of this town. Maybe in six months or so you'll have something on your minds besides Mary Pepper tree. Good 
at work, Manning. That was a fast exit. And a permanent one. He's leaving town. Oh, well, I guess that solves our problem. Good luck with uh, Miss Peppertree. Thanks. Well, good evening, Sam. Rather late to be having dinner, isn't it? Your office told me I'd find you here, and I didn't come to eat. Something wrong? Plenty. After the way my papers have been supporting the president, he's certainly picking a fine way to show his gratitude. Well, I don't follow you, Sam. It's Farrington and that Peppertree girl. Oh, not you, too. Now, let's sit down and talk this over calmly. I'm afraid I'm getting a little old, Sam. Just where do you fit into the picture? Farrington and my daughter are practically engaged. Now, all of a sudden, two nights in a row, he breaks days to go out with a telephone operator. And I understand it was the president who arranged it. Well, believe me, Sam, there's no cause for concern. Miss Peppertree is practically married to that young man talking to Justice Peabody. Now, why isn't she with him instead of Farrington? <laughs> Stop worrying, Sam. It's bad for the liver. There's absolutely nothing between Farrington and Miss Peppertree. It doesn't look that way from where I'm sitting. Huh? Oh, Mr. Elwood, we wondered what happened to you. Good evening, Mr. Litchfield. Good evening. Thomas, I'd like a word with you, privately. I can take a hint. Remember, Admiral, don't give up the ship. Thomas? I did all right with Paxton. Let me handle Mary, too. Hello, everyone. Oh, Good evening, Mary. Mary. Where's Mr. Paxton? He left. Well, that's funny. He was supposed to wait. Oh, he couldn't very well. I practically threw him out. Why? Philip, you knew this was terribly important to him. What I'd like to know is why it's so important to you. Well, for only one reason, I thought I could help him. If you didn't want to, you should have said so in the first place. Mary, in our opinion, you're making a fool of yourself over this, Paxton. If anybody's making a fool of me, it's you. Now you've put me in such a ridiculous position, I can't even try to explain to him. Good night, gentlemen. Goodbye, Philip. This time she's really mad. Better I should talk to her. Tom, will you please take me home? Certainly. Mary, please. Oh, excuse me. Mary, you can't go now. I'm sorry, Gustav, but there's no reason for me to stay. Just a moment, Thomas. Doris wanted me to remind you that we're expecting you to go to the opera with us tomorrow night. I'm sorry, sir, but I've already invited Miss Peppertree. Harvey. Now, oh, Sam, I'm sure we'll straighten this out. You'd better. And I wouldn't count too much on that young man with a Justice Peabody. Gustav, if this thing is serious between Mary and the lieutenant, I'm in a spot. <laughs> Last night, I saw him kissing her. Last night? But when we came downstairs, it wasn't the lieutenant she was kissing. It was a different one. That's where I saw him. Who? Buxton. He's the different one. He is, huh? Well, Gustav, Mary strikes me as a girl of pretty good judgment. There must be something to Paxton we don't see. At any rate, I'd rather he didn't leave town just now. It's not enough. I have my examination. Now I have this to worry about. Well, Philip, I have news for you. This fellow you threw out, Mr. Elwood is going to throw back. Well, hello, Manny. Mr. Paxton, this is a surprise. Well, I feel I owe you an apology, and I'd like to make amends for last night. Ah, oh, forget it. No. What was it you wanted me to do? Well, that's very nice of you, Manning, but uh, the situation's well under control. Mr. Elwood and his assistant, Mr. Crombie, were here just a little while ago. They're taking care of everything. Oh, they are. Hmm, I see you leaving town. No, no, I'm unpacking. Unpacking? Yeah, according to Mr. Elwood, it'll be about three weeks before I can expect any action. Nonsense. I can get the Attorney General's office working on it and have the entire matter determined in 24 hours. Well, that's great. Gee, I sure appreciate that. I have all the papers you'll need right here, including a photostatic copy of the original treaty. Now, don't you go building up any romances, Dad. I'm only going to the opera with the Lieutenant to do him a favor. He helped me with the Philip Manning situation, and I'm going to help him with the Doris Litchfield situation. That's all there is to it. Well, he's a fine young man, and if he's okay with the President, he's all right with me. There you go. Here's your toast. There he is. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Why, Mr. Paxton, what are you doing here? Taking you to the opera. Oh, aren't you expecting me? Oh, no, I'm going to the opera, but not with you. <laughs> That's funny. Mr. Elwood sent this pair of tickets to my hotel this afternoon, uh, along with this suit, a government car, 
uh, this corsage and a note saying you were expecting me. I don't understand. He knew I was going with Lieutenant Farrington. Oh, Farrington? Oh, uh, well, he can't make it. He's tied up on special duty aboard the President's yacht. And Mr. Elwood sent you instead? He didn't want you to be disappointed. Mr. Paxton, from previous conversations with Mr. Elwood, I have reason to be a little skeptical. Well, it's all here in the note. Read it for yourself. Official White House station it. Mr. Elwood's really going to bat for me. I'm finally getting some action. He tells me I have you to thank. Me? Yes. <clears throat> oh, good evening, Mr. Pepitree. Evening? Huh? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. Well, let's go, Mr. Paxton. Uh, but, Mary, what'll I tell you-know-who? You-know-who isn't coming. But suppose he calls or something. Just refer him to the White House, Dad. I wish the President would make up his mind. You don't seem very happy, Mr. Paxton. Miss Pepitree, I, I have a confession to make. I hate opera. Oh, not really, Mr. Paxton. Well, here it is, a beautiful spring evening. The breaks are finally coming my way. I'm at peace with the world. I love everybody. And we're going to go and sit in a stuffy hall, listen to a lot of wailing and bellowing about who killed whom and why. Oh, but nobody gets killed in the Barber of Seville. Well, if nobody gets killed, it can't be much of an opera. Oh, why waste our time? Here it is, a beautiful spring evening. I catch, Mr. Paxton. Where to instead? I'm in your hands. After all, this is your town. Mm -hmm. And I know it like a book. Page one, Lincoln Memorial. Page two, Jefferson Memorial. Page three, Arlington. Page 11. I think I like this the best. That's why I saved it until last. Change these cherry blossoms to gardenias, toss in a few thousand wild orchids. We'd be on the beach of Cocopango. You're back there again, are you? <laughs> it's the only way I can get there. Oh, I think your worries are just about over now that Mr. Elwood's in there pitching for you. Elwood? Mary, what do I tell him if he asks me about the opera? I don't know anything about it. Oh. Well, it's, uh, it's about a barber named Figaro. He's the Mr. Fixit of Seville. He spends half his time kibitzing everything that's going on, and the other half bragging about it, all in a deep, rich, baritone voice. The curtain goes up on the first act, scene one, and the stage is Mary, set. Mary, I don't have to know all about it. Isn't there a uh, hit tune? Yes. Yes, there is. How's your memory? <laughs> it's dynamite. It is, huh? Sure. Then start concentrating. Cavalier! 
Vecchie fanciulle, qua la parrucca, presso la barba, qua la sanguigna, presso il biglietto, tutti mi chiedono, tutti mi vogliono, tutti mi chiedono, tutti mi vogliono, qua la parrucca, presso la barba, presso il biglietto. Cherry Blossom, they sure is intoxicating to you young folks. But you're lucky the police didn't catch you. There's a law against swimming in that lagoon. Bertha, you're just as bad as my father. Now, I came here so I wouldn't have to go home and explain all this to him. I told you what happened. Please hurry up. Mr. Paxton's gonna get tired of waiting. All right. But there's one thing you still didn't tell me. What was Mr. Paxton doing when that barber Figaro pushed you in? <laughs> Yes, it has. I'm certainly glad you know who couldn't make it. <laughs> it's funny the way things work out, isn't it? How's that? Well, I... well, nothing. I think maybe I better go in now. Good night, David. Good night, Mary. Well, David, there's something I've got to find out. Huh? It happened again. The same thing happened the other night. Don't you feel well? Oh, I feel wonderful. You see, David, every time... <clears throat> Look. I beg your pardon. What are you doing here? I've been waiting for Mr. Paxton. For me? Yes. I've checked your documents. You've got a valid claim. I've filed the necessary papers in the proper court. The case doesn't come up for over a year, but you'll be notified in time. I thought I should tell you tonight, knowing how anxious you are to get out of Washington. Well, I, uh, I appreciate your speed and efficiency, Manning, but uh, I've changed my plans. I'm uh, staying around a while. I assure you I can handle everything for you. Well, not everything. Hi. Tom. Is this a private sewing circle, or are you taking in new members? I suppose you came to discuss business with Mr. Paxton, too. Uh-uh. I was here earlier, had a little chat with your dad, and left. Mr. Elwood's note said that you were tied up. At 6 o'clock this evening, Miss Peppertree, Lieutenant Farrington was ordered aboard the presidential yacht to check supplies for a trip that won't be made for another three months. That's funny. Not very. It was done deliberately so I wouldn't be able to keep our date. Oh, that's ridiculous. Who'd do a thing like that? My friend, Mr. Litchfield, and your friend, Mr. Elwood. It's a conspiracy to keep us apart, and this guy's the patsy they're using to do it. What are you so smug about? You're the patsy they picked to split up Mary and me. Now, Philip, Tom... I don't get it. Who's splitting up who? What is all this? It's all very simple, Mr. Paxton. Farrington was brought in to split up Mary and me. Now they're using you to split up Mary and Farrington. Vicious little circle, isn't it? That's an understatement. Oh, it really isn't as bad as it sounds. I think you can it? save your explanations for the switchboard, Miss Peppertree. You know, just knowing you is like living on a merry-go-round. Only I'm not waiting around to try for the brass ring. Won't you please? No, listen? I'm not going to be a patsy for you or for anyone else. Manning, you and the sailor can fight it out. The field's wide open. Mary. Well, I hope you both are satisfied. I've never felt so thoroughly cheap and ashamed. Hey, wait.
Where do you think you're going? To get my hat, do you mind? Mary, I'd He like just to... wants to get his hat. Mary, I'm sorry about what happened. You know I wouldn't do anything to hurt you. Oh, I know that, Philip. It really wasn't your fault. I can't understand Paxton taking that attitude. Understanding his attitudes is a full-time job, and I've given it up. You know, Philip, you were right in the first place. I never should have gone to work on the White House switchboard. Well, I was right about other things. We're not just a habit with each other, Mary. We belong together. I don't know. Right now, I'm all mixed up. You're really an awfully nice person, Philip. And, and, well, maybe you don't give me the hiccups, but you don't give me any headaches, either. I don't want to give you anything but happiness. You get yourself a good night's sleep, and I'll call you the first thing in the morning. Good night, old man. I thought you'd gone. I couldn't. Not while I'm still in the doghouse. Mary, I'm in love with you. But you couldn't be. I couldn't, I can't, but there it is. I want you to marry me. Oh, Tom, we've only known each other three days. Well, what's the difference? We've hit it off perfectly from the first minute. That's what's important. But only yesterday it was a battleship that was important. Well, that was yesterday. Today everything's different. I don't know what to say, Tom. I'm all mixed up. We don't have to get married right away. I'm patient. I'm willing to wait, even a month if necessary. Mary! I'll phone you in the morning. Honey. What in the world is going on down there? I wish I knew. We have no record of any such person. Sorry. The governor is not expected until tomorrow, sir. You may get that information from the State Department. White House. Oh, good morning, Gustav. Now, look. Philip told me the good news. Congratulations to your re-engagement. Yes, Gustav, you're the I'm fifth person afraid. to congratulate me this morning, but there's nothing definite. Oh, I'm sure Philip and you, you'll be very, very happy. And now you can wish me luck, too. My examination, I'm taking on 4 o'clock. And imagine, Justice Peabody is going to swim in right away. I have not to wait. So tonight, I'll close up my place and we'll have a party. We'll celebrate you and Philip making up and my citizenship at the same time. <laughs> That's fine, Gustav. But about Philip and me, I... I'm getting busy, Gustav. Goodbye and good luck. Yes, please. I am still trying to reach the council general, sir. White House. Thank you. Oh, good morning, Justice Peabody. Sorry to interrupt, Senator. Oh, but it isn't all settled, Mr. Justice. Thank Mary, a call for you on four. Oh, I have another call, Justice Peabody. Well, thank you very much. Miss Peppertree speaking. I'll give him your message. Oh, Justice Van Sloan, now, now I know what you're going to say, sir. Mary, and thank you, but on three. Tell him to wait. It's the president. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Justice, but I can't talk to you right now. Yes, it's a very happy moment. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. President. Oh, thank you, sir, but there seems to be a little misunderstanding. Yes, please. White House. Lieutenant Farrington. Oh, but Mr. President. Next month. White House. Oh, but, but that isn't definite, Mr. President. I, I mean, there's nothing. I'll give him your message. One moment, please. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Mary. It's no use, Harky. You better start looking for another girl. Looks like I'll just have to marry somebody. I'm sorry, Mr. Litchfield, but I have no idea where to locate Mr. Elwood. Yes, Mr. Litchfield, he knows about Farrington's engagement, and I assure you he is just as disturbed about it as you are. Yes, Mr. Litchfield, I'll tell him when he comes in. Angry, huh? Steaming. Crombie, I don't get it. I'm certain that girl is no more in love with Farrington than I am. Get David Paxton on the phone. I'm sorry, sir, but he's left Washington. As a matter of fact, his plane took off just about ten minutes ago. Oh, fine. He's my one hope of breaking up this Farrington thing. Now he's gone. Probably on his way out of the country. Well, it's just as well, sir. He shouldn't have been here in the first place. Why not? That's one of the odd complications I found in this case, sir. Mr. Paxton is not a citizen. Technically, he's guilty of illegal entry. Are you sure? I'm positive, sir. I checked with the State Department. 
According to his father's treaty, Skip you see... Skip the details and get me the Immigration and Naturalization Service and then ask Miss Peppertree to come here. Get me the Immigration Department, please. You know, Crombie, there's nothing like trouble to bring young folks together. That's why Cupid shoots them with an arrow instead of a feather. You can't do this to me. It's unconstitutional. I've got my rights. I'm an American citizen. You're not an American citizen and never were. Well, we'll see about that. I'll ca... Uh. So you're behind this. I might have known. Look, Mr. Pat... Just tell me one thing, young lady. Why do you plague me like this? What did I ever do to you? Life was so simple and easy before you came along. Mr. Elwood told me you were in trouble. I only came down here to see if I could help you. What's this all about, anyway? Don't ask me. Ask them. You'll find out from the deputy commissioner. There he is, sir. David Paxton. Mr. Commissioner, by what legal right am I being deprived of my citizenship? You're not being deprived of anything, Mr. Paxton. By virtue of this treaty, when your father accepted ownership of Cocopango Atoll, he became a blood brother of the native king and also renounced his American citizenship. Oh, that's ridiculous. I've always considered myself an American, so did my father. Legally, you're not. And I'm afraid we have no other course but to have you deported. Deported? Where to? The place of your birth, Cocopango Atoll. <laughs> Go right ahead. Try and do it. <laughs> the Navy won't let me in. They'll have to let you in. Well, I... I don't want to go. I refuse to go. I'll fight this in every court in the country. You'll have the opportunity, Mr. Paxton. We'll set a hearing in the near future. And what am I supposed to do in the meantime? You'll have to remain in custody. Unless you can get somebody to post bond for you. I'll be glad to do it, Mr. Commissioner. Oh? Are you a property owner? No, but my father... Oh, he isn't either. There's Gustav. Gustav Heindel. He owns a big restaurant. Is he a citizen? No, but he will be by tonight. Well, in that case, he'll probably be acceptable. But in the meantime, Mr. Paxton will have to remain in custody. Oh. David, I'll arrange everything and have you out of here as soon as possible. Right now, I'd better get back to work. Goodbye, Mr. Commissioner, and don't worry, David. For your sake, Mr. Paxton, I hope the young lady can fix things up as easily as she thinks. <laughs> Fix them up or mix them up. She's just the girl who can do it. I know it's a regular commissioner, but if you're paroling to Miss Peppertree for 24 hours, I'll assume full responsibility. They'll have a regular bond posted by then. Don't forget my message. Oh, yes. Tell Mr. Paxton Miss Peppertree will meet him at Gustav's as soon as she's off duty. Uh, I'm very grateful to you, Commissioner. Good day. Well, it's all arranged. Mr. Elwood, you're just about the nicest person I've ever met. If Gustav can't arrange for a bond until tomorrow, we still wouldn't want a fine young fellow like Paxton staying overnight in jail, would we? No, we wouldn't. Well, I have to run now, Mr. Elwood. Harky gave me an hour off, and I've already taken three. Well, Crombie, the committee reports progress. I'm glad to hear it, sir. Everything all cleared up? Mm -hmm. Clearing. Then maybe we can go into some of these matters for the president. I'm sorry to barge in like this, Harvey, but I just received a call from the State Department about the deportation of a David Paxton. They told me you know something about it. Why, yes, Admiral. Do you, by any chance, also know that Cocopango Atoll is now called Carlson Island? Carlson Island? Well, we've got a naval base there. Yes, precisely. Three hundred million dollars worth. And I hope you realize the significance of the deportation proceedings against Paxton. If we establish him as a foreigner, we establish the island as foreign soil and not part of the United States, which means that the Navy is trespassing. Great Scott, Admiral. Paxton never spoke about anything but studying fish. He made it sound small and unimportant, and he certainly never mentioned Carlson Island. That could have been deliberate. Tarly, I'm afraid you've been taken in by a smart operator. This Paxton has maneuvered the government into a position where we either have to make terms with him or move. We'd better take this up with the president. Building right away, sir. Secretary of the Navy, right away, sir. Justice Peabody, yes, sir. White House, one moment. Attorney General, this is the priority call yes, sir. for official business. Right away, sir. I have Senator Benning for you. I am ringing the Immigration Service, sir. Secretary of Defense, one moment, please. Secretary of State is on his way over, sir. Thank you. Keep alert, girl. Something big is happening. We haven't had this much activity since BJ Day. <laughs>
that I'm sorry I'm late, but we had a murderous day on the switchboard. David, don't tell me something went wrong. Oh, Gustav, you didn't refuse him. He's got to have a citizen. Who's a citizen? Oh, no. With the whole Supreme Court coaching me, I didn't pass. But you knew everything perfectly. Even better than perfectly. I remembered every word what Justice Peabody told me, what Justice Williams told me, what Justice Hastings told me, what Justice Van Sloan told me. It was so easy. And the first question alone, I talked for 45 minutes. So this man said, come to the point. So I came to the point another 20 minutes. Again, he asked me to come to the point. So I kept coming to the point. And the second question, I didn't even finish what Justice Peabody told me. All of a sudden, the examination was over. The man said I should come back in three months with shorter answers. And that, Mary, is that. Oh, we're not licked yet. Wait till the justices arrive. I'll get them to help us. Mary, they are not coming. Right after my examination, I called off the party and reopened for business. Justice Peabody promised me he'd be here. Him and Justice Van Sloan I couldn't reach. They have an important meeting with the president. Yes, I know. I hope he doesn't keep them there all night. Well? Paxton's in the driver's seat, all right. We'll have to make the best deal we can. I guess this is a matter for our office, Manning. Find Paxton and tell him we want to see him. Hey, just a moment. This is primarily a naval affair. Lieutenant, locate this Paxton and bring him here. At once, sir. No, you'd both better go. You'll find him at Gustav's with Miss Peppertree. Now, gentlemen, let's decide just how we'll handle Mr. Paxton when he gets here. Say, Philip, what's the big powwow about? Mary, in a way. That Paxton's got him mixed up in a bad situation. We're on our way to Gustav's now. Hmm. Moran, take over for a while. Wait, fellas, I'm going with you. I mean, he's got to break up sometime. You know, it's a funny thing about being an American. You just take it for granted until somebody tries to take it away from you. I know, Mr. Paxton. You know, for two years, I've been trying to get back to Kokopanga Atoll. <laughs> now they're trying to push me there, and I'm fighting not to go. David. What happens if you marry an American citizen? Nothing. Not since the Cable Act of 1922. Mm, I suppose that's right. Wait a second. Was that a proposal? Oh, no, I was just... Paxton, uh, you're wanted at the White House. Me? What for? Mr. Paxton, why didn't you tell me that Kokopanga Atoll and Carlson Island are the same place? Well, you didn't ask me. How could I? I didn't know I was getting involved in a plot against the United States. Philip, what on earth are you talking about? Ask him. Look at him. He doesn't know what we're talking about. Your friend here has maneuvered the government into a spot where it has to come to terms with him in order to keep one of our most strategic naval bases. David. Let me get this straight, Lieutenant. Is that, is that what all this fuss is about? The government thinks I'm playing landlord? Well, aren't you? Well, if you must know, yes. Yes, Coco Pango is my island. And since I'm not a citizen, that makes it a foreign sovereign state. And your Navy doesn't belong there unless I say so. What did I tell you? David, you're not serious. Why not? Honey, you and I could be mighty happy with the kind of money this will bring in. Why, you... You stinker. Oh, now that's no way to feel, Mary. Business is business. Paxton, if you as much as talk to my daughter again, I... Get him out of here before I forget myself. Let's go, Paxton. Well, I'd like to oblige you, Lieutenant, but uh, I'm in Miss Peppertree's custody. I can't go anyplace unless she accompanies me. Tell Benedict Arnold I wouldn't be seen with him. Sorry, boys. I don't budge without my custodian. It uh, looks like the meeting will have to come here. Of all the presumptuous... Forget it, Manning. I'll phone the White House and deliver his message. Uh, won't you join me? Huh. <laughs> 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 sit down, Gustav. I don't sit with Benjamin Arnold. <laughs> sit down. <laughs> you know, Gustav, I have a hunch that this next chapter is going to be very interesting. In four more years, I'd be eligible for a pension, but this is liable to cost me my job. What about me? I had to be the one who filed his papers for him. In a hurry, too. I'll probably have to resign. I'm terribly sorry, Philip. Well, the mountain's coming to Mohammed. They're on their way over. It's a fine thing, a man like that dictating to half the president's cabinet. What gets me is I was stupid enough to tell the admiral I knew Paxton. Oh, Tom, it isn't going to hurt your career, too. Well, it'll probably be a board of inquiry. Just knowing the guy will call for some fancy explaining. I was dreaming of battle wagons. Be lucky if I get assigned to a garbage cow. Well, I can take a bow for this mess. Every bit of it. Look at him sitting there, so smug and self-satisfied. 
Come on, Manning. Here's the brass. That's Paxton over at that table. Hey, well, we may be unduly alarmed. He couldn't be that relaxed if he really knew what a spot he's got us in. I'm afraid he's going to be difficult to handle. He says the Navy that pays up or gets out. Hmm. You three feel him out. We'll wait over there. All right. We may as well find out where we stand. Paxton, we're here to negotiate that Carlson Island situation. Oh, good. Just what is it you're after, Mr. Paxton? Well, to begin with, I understand your Navy has several hundred millions tied up there. Oh, there's no cause for alarm, gentlemen. I don't intend to be unreasonable. I realize there's been a certain amount of depreciation in material and equipment, and I'm quite willing to allow for it. I'm open to offers. Offers? We're not here to make offers. Oh, I'm sorry. I understood you wished to negotiate this matter, not merely discuss it. Well, why should we buy what we already own? It's our naval base. Yes, but it's on my island. Please, Mr. Paxton, this could be war. Now, gentlemen, we are approaching the problem the wrong way. Before we can negotiate, Mr. Paxton, we've got to discuss this calmly and from every angle. I'm perfectly willing to discuss it, Mr. Elwood, but uh, first I'd like to go over a few of the angles with uh, Miss Peppertree. Miss Peppertree? I'll see here, Paxton. I don't see any harm in that, Admiral. I'll tell Miss Peppertree. Thank you. Elwood, what in blazes has Miss Peppertree got to do with this? That's a long story. Paxton's becoming extremely difficult, gentlemen. He insists on discussing the matter with Miss Peppertree. Me? Well, I don't want to talk to him. And I don't blame her. I know how you feel, Mary. But at a time like this, you mustn't allow your personal feelings to overshadow your patriotic duty. But I have nothing to discuss with him. He insists he has something to discuss with you. Please, Mary, as a favor to me. I don't understand it. Well, the three of us couldn't get anywhere. Perhaps the situation requires the feminine touch. You want to talk to me? Oh, yes. Yes, I, uh... But this place is a little too public. Uh, where's the kitchen, Gustav? The kitchen? Oh. This way, please. Harvey, this is getting more and more absurd. Why does he have to talk to Mary, and why in the kitchen? It's obvious the man's slightly mad. Maybe I'd better go in there. Now, now, gentlemen, there's no cause for alarm. <clears throat> I'm sure. Mr. Gustav, Mr. Paxton wants to see you. Me? Oh, no. I'm staying here. I think you better go, Gustav. Well, Harvey, explain that. No, I'm not even going to try, Senator. What do we do? Just stand here? Let's do something about this. All right. What do we do? Well, uh... I don't know. What's he after, Mary? Hey, what do you want? Have you got anything? Please, everybody. Mr. Paxton wants to speak to Justice Peabody or Justice Van Sloan. I'll go. I'm anxious to speak to him. Why does he want a Supreme Court justice? He needs a little legal help. We want to be absolutely sure we've got the correct phrasing for the proposition we're going to submit. We? Yes, Dad. David and I talked it over, and we're in this together. Together? I won't have it. He's hypnotized her. That's no excuse. Mary, this is shocking. I never I heard of such a thing. Should be Just a minute, gentlemen, please. Mary, you say that you and Paxton are in this together? Yes, and the government will just have to meet our terms. Mary! Well, just what are the terms? Well, they're working out the details in the kitchen. Oh, you gentlemen seem a little upset. Now, there's a great deal involved that's going to take a little time, so why don't you just relax? How about a little relaxing music, Igor? Mary, you're a lifesaver. This guy's been murdering me. Seven blitzes in a row. Let's see, seven blitz. Uh, I owe you 14 cents. Come on. Mary, I don't want to relax. I want an explanation. Now, Dad, you're all excited. Why don't you go back to your gloomy old table and spread a little sunshine? Go on. It's hard enough to figure out any female mind, but when the female is your own daughter, it's impossible. Harvey, if the press ever finds out about this, they'll boil us alive. That's nothing to what those Sunday radio commentators will do. Gentlemen, I have drafted for submission to the Senate a treaty of annexation between the United States of America and Mr. David Paxton, sovereign ruler of Cocopango Atoll. Session to the United States will be made for and in consideration of one dollar. One dollar? 
Well, as a member of the Naval Affairs Committee, I can promise immediate ratification by the Senate. Well, it says to me if you can However, gentlemen, however, there are three conditions demanded by Mr. Paxton. One, Mr. David Paxton is to be appointed Director of Research of the Fish and Wildlife Service. Two, Mr. Philip Manning, in consideration of exceptional legal ability, is to be given a circuit court judgeship in a district not less than 1,500 miles from Washington, D.C. Three, Lieutenant Thomas Farrington is to be assigned to immediate active sea duty and is to be given his choice as to the type of naval craft. Well, gentlemen, I think you have the authority to act on the conditions. What is your pleasure? I don't think there's any doubt. I uh, slipped the last two conditions in on my own. We're going to live in this town. I'm putting plenty of space between me and competition. <laughs> Mr. Paxton, we are certain that your conditions can be met. Lieutenant, you can start packing your gear. Thank you, sir, and thank you, Paxton. Nice maneuvering, Paxton. <laughs> well, shall we adjourn? I... Wait a minute. Your Honor, she told him about me. Oh, 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 yes, yes. One other thing, gentlemen. By the terms of the treaty, all residents of Cocopango Atoll shall automatically become citizens of the United States. As of ten minutes ago, by edict of the ruler, David Paxton, Mr. Gustav Heindel was proclaimed a resident of Cocopango. Therefore, upon annexation, Mr. Heindel, as well as Mr. Paxton, becomes an American citizen. Barry, you should call the president. Let him know everything is all right. All right? Everything's wonderful. Pepper! Bertha, you know, Alex, fix up the house of Kefala Gustav. We are going to have a party after all. Jawohl, boss. <laughs> I'm so happy for you, Gustav. From now on, call me Gus. Mary, find out if the president is doing anything tonight. <laughs> Hello, Harky, this is Mary. I'd like to speak to the president. Oh, but that's ridiculous. I'm a citizen. He's a servant of the people. I have every right to... Oh, hello, Mr. President. This is Mary Peppertree. I wanted you to know that everything is perfect. Just perfect.